everyone, welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Today is also going to be my Vlogmas Day 3, so you're not getting a separate Vlogmas video, just this podcast. Um, but I know there are a lot of Vlogmases out there, so you'll have plenty to watch, and I'm not doing that many interesting things every day so <laughs> I I'm not sure if I have footage for every day for vlogmas this year but we will see so for today uh so first off let me um chat a bit about vlogmas because if you don't know vlogmas is uh basically vlog christmas um or christmas vlogs it's one vlog every day so a short video um about christmasy things or just uh everyday stuff uh so you'll see people knitting or um brewing their cup of tea or cup of coffee um you know, last year we went to Christmas markets. This year, not so much. <laughs> Even though I did went to, I did go to a market uh, yesterday. I took you guys on my grocery shopping trip, <laughs> which I always find. You know, I don't find grocery shopping fun. But if I'm in another country, uh, grocery stores are very exciting to me. So I thought I'd uh, give you guys a little peek into our uh, local grocery store and uh, I show you lots of Dutch things, uh, milk, cheese, <laughs> hagelslag, which is chocolate sprinkles to put on your bread. Uh, my boyfriend has them every morning, a uh, sandwich with hagelslag, chocolate sprinkles, yes and one sandwich with cheese and stroop, which is kind of an apple syrup. Very, very Dutch. It can't get more Dutch than that. He also drinks about a liter of milk every day. Anyway, <laughs> so um, today I was going to show you my um, third advent mini from my advent calendar. And uh, so a little warning, if you haven't seen my vlog misses yet, I am showing my advent calendar from Wolmet Verde, a Dutch indie dyer. And so if you have the same one and you don't want to uh, have it spoiled for you, uh, this one is the Earthy Whispers, or Earthly Whispers. Let's see, Earthly Whispers, okay. Uh, because she had two different colorways for her advent. Let me actually show you the advent calendar. I put it in a rituals box. Um, it came in a custom bag with her logo on it and yeah, it was very cute. And I put the bags all in here. Um, at first I put them up on my wall with washi tape but then it came down and yeah. <laughs> so I didn't bother with it anymore. So it's in this box. And I'm opening one bag each day, and each bag contains one 20 gram mini. And 20 grams is pretty generous for a mini skein. Um, and this was day one. So, spoiler alert, I'm showing you the colors now. This is day one. So, it was, um, they're all very moody colors up until now, which I really, really like. So a gray with hints of, I don't know, red or plum or purple. It's really, really pretty. And there are various shades of gray too. And then uh, day two was a bit darker. And uh, it has a more brownish tint to it. And then day three is lighter gray but also with that kind of reddish purple in there from day one and with some brown or maybe coppery orange speckles that remind me of some speckles in day two so i'm wondering if these could act as fade of sorts and um, 
yeah, I'm wondering if the whole advent calendar will work like that, because that would be exciting. Um, I did, I did know beforehand that we were starting with um, darker colors, because it said so um, on the order confirmation or something like that. Because it said so in the uh, introduction sheet that the advent calendar came with. Um, and so here you see day three. So it still has a lot of dark bits in there. Um, and there are uh, specific patterns for this year's advent calendar. And um, I checked on there beforehand. Um, and then you could get the pattern, but you wouldn't know what it is. Uh, and I just checked back yesterday, and I shouldn't have done that because there was a, f a picture of the finished thing. And um, yeah, so I might have spoiled it for myself, but I think it was a picture of the other colorway, which I think was called uh, Bright and Quirky? Bright and or maybe bright and colorful? I don't know. But um, yes, I'm not gonna tell you what it looked like, but um, yeah, it was a sweater and there was a cowl as well. Um, but yeah, I just hope that that was the other colorway. <laughs> and I'm not gonna check <laughs> to be sure because if it's the colorway that I have, you know, I, I just don't wanna spoil it for myself. Um, because I also have a sweater in mind for these advent minis and um if you know my around the world sweater which i will put a picture up here um it is a striped sweater with color work and i want to um knit another one but then with just the yoke uh, as a color work um theoretically i could do the whole sweater again but since I already have two uh, I thought I'd do something different now and also I want to add another short row so that the back is a little bit higher um, so I might write up a new pattern for that and it will be my advent sweater <laughs> uh, yes I'm looking forward to that but uh, I can't do much planning yet because I only have three colors none of which will contrast well with each other so I'm going to have to see if if I can do a color work sweater or if I need to bring in another uh, color because I have been looking at my uh, yarn stash to find some suitable yarn to pair it with but more on that later because first I want to be showing you what I have finished this week and I have finished another hat but it is not a gift knit, it is for myself. <laughs> and it's a beret! Um, I was so inspired by the beret that I knit as a gift um, that I wanted one for myself because it was so fun, so quick, and uh, it looked surprisingly good on me. <laughs> so this was the one that I knit um, as a gift. And then I thought I wanted one in pink or purple. It's more purple than pink. Um, these are my own hand dyed yarns. One is a sport weight and the other is a mohair. And I love it! Ta -da! I love it so much. And I love the waves here and I love blocking a beret because I don't have the plate here anymore but I blocked it on a big fruit plate um, at first I thought a dinner plate would do but uh, that turns out to be a little bit too small um, so I blocked it on a big fruit plate so it was uh, 28 centimeters and then um, so you wet block it, you put it on the plate, that's how you get the nice fold line in there. And then um, I used some smooth yarn um, 
and I went through the I-cord to kind of cinch it in a little bit more. Um, I do have some pictures of that, so I'll put that up here. I meant to do that last time, but I didn't, I don't think that I did. So I'll put that in here. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really fun. And I thought I would make one for myself. And um, so these, I knit this one. Oops. I knit the first one with three lace weights. So one was uh, Gould DK, 100% um, Scottish lamb's wool, um, and kind of a lace weight base. It was 650 meters per 100 grams. And I used two strands of mohair. So there is this lovely halo. And um, you don't see the increase lines as much, which I really like. Um, and I tried to felt it a little bit while washing it. So I just rubbed it a little bit more heavily. Uh, and I used hand soap instead of my wool wash because I read somewhere that you felt things with soap and lots of friction and hot water than cold water so I used very hot water on that. I did the same with this one. Uh, this is two skeins of my hand dyed yarn. This is one sport weight, uh, wool rami, and one mohair. So one strand of each and you see the increase um, rows a little bit better here. Uh, but I don't mind as much. Um, yeah, and I used a smaller needle for the eye cord in this one because last time I said, um, due to all the Stephen West pattern knitting, I have trained myself to knit eye cord very loosely. And if you have knit a Stephen West pattern, you know why that is important. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah. With this beret, it's it's all right, but I wanted to um, knit it a little bit tighter for this one. So I uh, knit the beret on 3.5 millimeter and the I-cord on 3 millimeter. And I'm really happy with it. Um, and the pattern is the Bees Bees Beret by Sari Nordland. And oh my God, this designer, it's just someone that you love to hate. <laughs> it's just looking at her, at her Ravelry and at her Instagram feed, it's just, you know, perfect. Her designs are spotless. It's amazing. Ah, uh, just, yeah, major jealousy over here. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It's just one of those designers that I'm gonna have to be careful with to not follow them too much, otherwise I'll get a bit, um, yeah. <laughs> Same with Andrea Maori and Caitlin Hunter and um, who else? Rohan Knits. Um, uh, just following all of those great designers um, and then seeing design after design and publication after publication, it sometimes gets me down a little bit. <laughs> so I try to shield myself from all of their awesomeness. Um, but yeah, definitely check her out. Sorry, Northland. She is just a uh, sorry N on uh, Instagram. But uh, yeah, her designs are awesome. And um, I think I might have to knit my mom one because uh, she was very um, smitten with my berets and she says she already has the suitable yarns for it at home so uh, yeah I might pick them up this weekend and knit her one. The other thing that I finished, although it's not really a fiber related thing, is the advent calendar for my boyfriend and you'll have seen it in my vlogmas videos. Um, yeah, and I was working on it last week. It's little fabric bags, and the fabric is, um, it has birdhouses on there, and yeah, there was a big tree print, but it kind of, it gets lost, um, because the bags are so small, but yes, those are tree 
like um, bark print and not like hairs okay <laughs> yes but uh, they are very cute some of them even have a bird on them this is a bird print but again you can't really see it uh, unless it's on the bigger bags yeah but um, I had fun sewing them getting my sewing machine out again and uh, I wrapped the presents in some tissue paper and I put a paper tag on them with some organza thread and the job is done and yeah it was a lot of fun and the last bits and pieces arrived last Monday um, 30th of November and I was happy to put them in there on Monday and then give it um, to him on the 1st of December yeah so that was also one thing that I finished <laughs> I haven't actually been knitting a whole lot. Um, I've been having some wrist pains. Um, yeah, that wasn't very nice. Um, and I don't have that much to show you because one of the things I'm knitting on is secret, so I can't show you. Uh, but the thing that I can show you, and that is a new cast on since last time, is a colorwork hat for one of the people on my gift list. Uh, so I've just completed one color work chart, so you can't see much at all yet. But I finished the 41 rounds of ribbing. Uh, I think in the pattern um, I use 38 rounds, but uh, I just I just didn't count this time and uh, stopped when it was long enough. And yeah. Um, and this hat is going to be for a person who is not very colorful in his outerwear clothes. So um, that's why this is very much out of my comfort, um, color comfort zone. Uh, so it's a very dark gray, um, a, what do you call this? Um, reddish brown, a chestnut, that would be good, chestnut, um, a grayish green, a light gray, and I have some more greens in here, and this one, but I'm not sure, I think this one will be too bright. So yes. <laughs> But I actually think having more muted colors like this will make it much more wearable. Um, and that's a good thing. So that's what I have done this week. I cast it on on um, Sunday, I think. And it's Thursday now. So it's going a little bit slower than the other hats. But I think that also has to do with um, one... It's my seventh hat, and two, it's uh, not the colors that I would choose, so um, I'm not too excited by this project. Uh, but I will mark it on my progress board nonetheless, so let me just go and get that. Right, so color work hat number seven. So this is actually the last hat, because after this, I only have the bow ties to do, and then... Uh, I think I'm gonna go for the punch needle pot holder for the mystery project. Um, so I'd say it's not halfway, although the ribbing did feel like it went on forever. But uh, I'd say maybe one third, one third of a hat. Might be true. Okay, so I'll mark one third on my progress board. Ta-da! We are getting there. And yes, it is December. So there's not much time left. But um, we're getting there. So, uh, oh, and the um, most of the yarns that I'm using for this hat is Scapius Metropolis, which 
I've used for the other colorwork hats as well. It's a 75% merino and 25% nylon yarn and the pattern that I'm using is my own home hat pattern which is a free pattern on my blog and you can also get a paid PDF version in my uh, Ravelry shop and in my own web shop if you want to um, get an easy printable PDF. And it comes in three adult sizes and the smallest size uh, may also fit children. Um, I've actually um, I've actually received a picture of someone who knitted for her son and I think he was like 11 or 13 or something and it fit him so let that be an indication. Uh, but I'm knitting the medium size for the male recipients of my hats. No, actually also the female recipients. I, all, I only knit the small version for myself. And I knit the medium size for everyone else. Um, yeah, the medium will fit most, most adult heads. So there's that. And that was actually all that I have been up to, but uh, for the remainder of this podcast episode, I thought I would talk a little bit about high twist yarns. Um, oh, and now that I see, I think I also have to mention my cardigan because a lot of people ask me about my cardigan. Uh, yes, I knitted myself. No, there is no pattern. Um, I knitted with eight strands of lace weight yarn It's very fluffy. Um, so eight strands of lace weight on 10 millimeter needles, I think. And it was four stitches per, no. I'm not sure what the gauge was on, off the top of my head, but I did create a project page on Ravelry. Um, and there I have noted everything, the cast on numbers, uh, how many stitches that I decreased. So if you're interested in making a cardigan like this, um, then I would suggest you go and find my Ravelry notebook. Um, the front panels and the back panel is worked from the bottom up and the uh, and in pieces and then seamed here and the arms are made from the wrist up um, but then in the round and then I seamed them here and I reinforced the shoulder seams with some uh, crochet on the inside um, crochet slip stitch or is it crochet single crochet I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, both of those uh, stitches will do to reinforce a uh, seam. And this um, bro brooch, brooch pin um, is a crocheted ice cream cone that I got from my friend May, who is Ice Pandora. Uh, and you can find her on Instagram as Ice Pandora Creations or regular Ice Pandora. Uh, she has two accounts, one where she shares her crafty stuff and one where she shares her um, recipes. So, yes. And now, let's talk about high twist because I got some questions about what is a high twist yarn. Uh, because I mentioned this in my Vlogmas series, um, the yarn advent that I got has high twist yarn in there. Um, so this particular yarn base is 80% merino, 20% nylon base, which makes it perfect for its socks. And it is also a high twist yarn. And high twist means that um, the two threads, or two or more threads, that a yarn is built up of, from, um, that they are spun really tightly. So I can kind of unwind it here. I think this is a two ply. Can't really see, but um, they are twisted very, very tightly, uh, which has a couple of benefits. Uh, it makes a yarn more durable because it is twist more tightly. 
so the threads are just packed in there a little bit more tightly so they are less likely to let loose um, that makes it more durable it also gives it more stitch definition which I will talk about in a bit it makes it a little bit less soft um, and I think that is it. So um, if you have a yarn like, um, you know, one that is famous for its softness, cashmere. Uh, cashmere is very short hairs. If this is the cashmere thread, then you will see some fuzz on the outside because the, those are the hairs that are poking out. And that... Um, gives us a very soft feeling. It also means that um, the hairs are pulled out very easily, which, um, which creates little fuzz, little pills on your um, garment or item. With a high twist yarn, uh, it's less likely to pill, so it's more durable like that. Um, and a high twist yarn is also very suitable for socks in that way. Um, one of my um, hand eye yarn bases that I used to buy is a BFL high twist yarn. So this yarn has nylon and it has BFL, which is a more hardy fiber in itself. Um, and it is also high twist and you can the the twist is also visible with this yarn but the twist being visible does not mean that the twist is a high twist yarn so um with this yarn you can also see the twist but it's a very loose twist. The reason why you can see it is because it is a two-ply, uh, which means that only two strands are plied together to form this, this yarn. And a two-ply yarn is usually not very round, as people call it, and it causes the ply to be very visible. I have another uh, two ply here, which is my own hand spun. It's a party in this game. Um, it has glitter too. So this is also a two ply. Um, you can see it very well where two colors are spun together. See that is very, very loose. Uh, I can also, I bet I can find a place where the twist is higher. So that the twist is higher in this blue strand. Oh, is it the end? <laughs> I think this is the end. Um, yeah, you can't see that very well. Let me see if I can find a multicolored one. Okay, so these. You can see that the yarns, they are twisting very um, tightly around each other. So, um, yes. <laughs> trying to circle back. So um, a high twist yarn means that the plies are tied very, uh, very um, tightly around each other. Uh, it's usually visible, but a visible twist doesn't have to mean that it's high twist. You can also have a very loose twist as it is in this yarn as well, which is also one of my hand spun. And I have another, I have another one here, one that I think is fairly high twist.
but as uh, I spun it myself so I don't know exactly at what level a yarn is high twist but um, if you buy yarn it will usually say so on the tag so for example the yarn that I have in my advent calendar this is the same base it's called the merino twist sock and uh, uh, hand dyers or uh, manufacturers will often tell you if a yarn is high twist or not so you don't have to go um, you don't have to look at the yarn like is this high twist or not <laughs> but um, it does come with certain benefits so it's uh, more durable and it has better stitch definition and about the stitch definition I told you that I would come back to that uh, so this one is another yarn that is very high twist and it has some gold sparkle in there as well and I used it for a pair of socks a couple of years ago and uh, this sock pattern which are the mercury socks it has a lace pattern and the high twist in this yarn um, as I said, it makes for a really good stitch definition. And stitch definition means that you can see the stitches very well, uh, which is what you want if you are doing a lace pattern, a cable pattern, um, any kind of texture pattern. And with this sock you can see that very well even though it is variegated which often kind of obscures a pattern it is very very visible which is partly due to the high twist so this doesn't mean that if your yarn is not high twist that you cannot get a stitch definition that's not true it's just you get a really good stitch definition if you um, if you use a high twist yarn and the reason why I was um, emphasizing it that this much in my vlogmas series is that um, I'm still not sure if I like to pair a high twist yarn with a non high twist yarn because for this pattern I might need to use some other skeins in order to complete my sweater um, and ideally I want to use exactly the same base so that would also mean a high twist yarn so that's why I was um, emphasizing it that much um, yeah so that was a little master class on high twist yarns and I'm sure that I didn't cover it all because um, yeah I don't know everything about high twist but this was what I know about it and I thought I'd share I might have been very very chatty in this section <laughs> I was notice I was noticing it when um, um, it was Ingrid when Ingrid uh, commented on my vlogmas series asking what is a high twist yarn and my my reaction was like or my response was very lengthy so I thought hmm I might want to include this in a video <laughs> Um, because apparently I can talk a lot about this um, so yes that's it for this week's episode um, I will be back with my vlog series starting from tomorrow I'm still not sure uh, what I'm gonna do about the weekend because uh, I might not I might not be able to upload them on the same day um, so I'll see what I do about that um, yeah I'll see because this weekend is going to be very interesting we have our Santa Claus celebration on um, Saturday which is December 5th and we still celebrate it because uh, it's my mom's birthday as well and uh, it's her 60th birthday this year and uh, so we just celebrate her birthday and then because it's December 5th we also um, celebrate Santa Claus it's kind of our it's kind of our Christmas um, so we got lots of presents and um, yeah a nice dinner 
And then on Sunday we are going Christmas tree shopping, so that will be fun. So I'm, I'm going to uh, vlog that for sure. Um, yes, and I have been, for the first two Vlogmas videos, I've been premiering them on YouTube, um, which I hadn't tried before. And YouTube Premiere is kind of like a live video, but it's not a live video. So I've recorded a Vlogmas video and if I premiere it, I can watch I can watch the video live with you and there will be a live chat. And that was very fun. Um, so I did that for day one and day two. Uh, but for day two, I found that the video was a little bit too short. So by the end, there were a lot of a lot more people coming in, but then it ended. So, <laughs> um, so I might do that for my longer Vlogmas videos, or I might even do it for a podcast episode sometime. So let me know what you think about that, uh, if, if you have attended a YouTube premiere before. Um, it's I have to add, it's only fun if you watch it on your cell phone or a laptop or somewhere where you can type. Uh, if you watch it on your TV, uh, you can't see the live chat and that's the fun part about the YouTube premiere. So. Um, yeah, but let me know your uh, your thoughts on that, and I will let you guys enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And I'm going to edit this podcast so that I can upload it today. <laughs> uh, right, I will see you guys tomorrow in my new Vlogmas video, and I hope you enjoyed watching this one. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>